A lot of people skip this step when they pick up their new CNC, which causes their machine to cut inaccurately. You start to cut oblongs instead of circles, rectangles instead of squares. So if you want to see how to sort that problem out, stick around. G'day guys, Kieran here from KJH Woodworking and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to talk calibration of your CNC. Basically, that means ensuring that when you tell your CNC to move 1000 millimeters, it actually moves 1000 millimeters. Let's jump over the machine and explain this. Okay, so your machine is run by stepper motors, which are these black motors here, whether it be a lead screw or a rack and pinion, both have stepper motors. What you need to work out is how many steps does that machine need to move to get one millimeter? So to do that, we'll use a website as well as jump into CNCJS to go through how we actually work out the correct value. And we'll show you some tips along the way. Let's jump on the computer. We're going to be using our Workbase 3 CNC from the a store to do this, but the process is going to be very similar for whatever CNC you're using, whether you're using a full size CNC or a desktop CNC, very similar. The principles are the same. Let's jump into CNCJS and work out what we need to know to calibrate our machine. So if you jump on your computer, you'll have a macro down here that is actually what sets up your machine. You want to open that up. And if you scroll down, you will have a steps per millimeter for your X, Y, and Z axis. So I've currently got mine set up and my machine is calibrated. So I've got custom values in there. But for the sake of this, I'm gonna revert back to random numbers so you can see exactly what that does to the machine. As best practice, anytime I play with my settings on my machine, I copy and save a copy of the code in case I need to ever revert back to the original after I've made my changes. So I'll go ahead and hit Control A, Control C, which is copy, open up a notepad, paste that, and then I am just gonna save that to my desktop. All right, there we go. I already have one saved from previous. So current CNC settings, save. Now I've got that there if I ever need to come back to it. So I'm now going to go ahead and I'm just going to make this 33, 33 and 201. And then that one would be the same as my Y. So I'm going to save my changes. So I'm going to run my macro. Then I'm going to reset my controller. If you don't know how to reset your controller on the side of the controller near the switch is an actual reset button. So you hit that. Anytime you update your macro, you're going to have to reset that. Now we're going to jump over to the CNC. Okay, so we're going to work through each axis, marking and measuring to hone in the distance. So rather than talk about it, we're just going to jump in and do it. You're going to need yourself a really sharp pencil and a straight edge. And all you're going to do is mark in line where your plate is currently. Once you've marked your plate, jump back onto your computer. We're going to set ourselves a custom distance because I want to move one meter. So I'm going to go make my jog distance 1,000. And that is what we're going to use for our X. So now we're going to move our X across 1,000 millimeters. From there, we're going to grab a tape measure. We're going to butt our tape measure into that plate, measuring to our mark. I'm going to bring you in close so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. For the purposes of your viewing, I'm going to put some tape there so you can actually see the mark. So if I pull my tape across here, so my measuring is 1,034 millimeters. So you can imagine if I was cutting out a sign or a bit of furniture or a template, and I told my machine to move a thousand millimeters and it actually moved 34 millimeters more, that's a big issue. So to calibrate that, we're gonna jump on a website and we're gonna plug in some data, which is gonna give us a new steps per millimeter to hone this bad boy in. Let's jump on the computer. So first thing you're going to wanna do is home your machine, which is gonna bring it back to your zero, zero spot. Now, open up that macro again, find your X axis value, which we had as 33. We're gonna jump over to a website called layerfused.com. Link will be in the description below, but jump over to tools and there is a calibration tool. So what you're gonna to need to do is plug in your current steps per millimeter, which we were 33. Target value currently set as 100. Massive tip here, you want to use your maximum distance possible to get as accurate results as possible. If you hone in on 100 millimeters, but you're 0.1 millimeter out. By the time you're at the end of your CNC, you are 1.2 millimeters out. So if you hone it in your 0.1 millimeter out on over the whole machine, then you're only going to be 0.1 millimeter out, if that makes sense. Compounding error is a killer. So do it over the most distance 
you can to get as accurate results as possible. If you think that's a good tip, smash that thumbs up, but let's get stuck into calibrating. So our target value was 1,000. Our measured value was 1,034, which gives us a new steps per millimeter. So we are gonna copy that, go back in to our macro, update our macro, hit save, run. So now our macros ran, we're gonna reset our machine. Perfect. Now we are going to jog it over the thousand millimeters again. So we're doing the exact same process. Let's measure. And now we are bang on a meter. I don't know if you can see that. And that is how quick and easy it is to calibrate your X and Y axes. But you can see the amount of error that could have happened had you skipped this step. Calibrating your X axis is exactly the same principle as such. However, I do it a little bit differently on the machine with a set of calipers and a clamp. So we'll show you how we do that. First things first, get rid of any dust boots, hoses, take your bit out. You just want nothing in the way to knock your calipers. Okay, so you wanna grab your calipers, place them in position, touching surface is not going to move. Clamp that in position and then zero that out. Okay, so now we are perfectly on zero, zero, except you cannot see my calipers. So I'm going to lift this bad boy up. We are gonna follow the exact same process as before, except this time we're gonna move down 50 millimeters instead of moving it across 1,000 millimeters. So we're gonna jump over, set ourselves a custom distance, make that 50, hit save changes, change the distance to 50. Now we're gonna make our X axis go, go down 50 millimeters. Ready and go. That will have pushed the calipers down, giving us an exact distance moved. So we are 50.14, one three. So we're going with one three. Okay, so now we're gonna jump into the computer, update our steps, and then rerun that test to see what result we get. So exact same process, pick your macro, work out your X step. So we're 201. Now we are gonna go into layer fused. So our current steps are 201. Our target value was 50 millimeters. Our measured was 50.13. This is our new step value. So we'll paste that, we'll save those changes. We're gonna run our macro, run. When that finishes running, we are then going to reset our macro. We're gonna unlock. We are going to home our machine, reset our calipers, and then rerun the test. Now we are going to send it down 50 millimeters. So now I am 0.8 millimeters out. So after doing it, Everything there, we were 0.08 millimeters out, which is less than the thickness of a sheet of paper. So for what I do, I'm happy with that. But you could run that again and then keep updating your steps until you hone that in precisely. The reality is for that kind of precision, I'm relying on a set of calipers that I don't know are that accurate. So for me, I am happy with those results. And that my friends is how simple it is to calibrate your machine, which is vital, particularly if you built your machine yourself. Because out of the box, there's always gonna be variant, always gonna be slightly different tension between people on your pinion um, or your racking, sorry. There's going to be slightly different tightness of your bolts and your screws. So always calibrate your machine after you've assembled it. If you like content like this and wanna see more tips and tricks in relation to our CNC, subscribe to the channel. If you've got anything out of this video, we would appreciate you smashing that thumbs up button because that helps us know that you're enjoying the content. So we'll start making more in this format and about these topics. If you've liked this video, you're gonna love this and we will catch you there. Cheers guys.